Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Terrigan Ring Series Emulation Night School, where I show you how to set up some of the most popular emulators, how to get them installed, and how to get playing games. And if you can't tell already, we're going to be talking about Xenia Canary today, getting you through the entire setup process and getting you emulating Xbox 360 on your PC. Now before we start, do keep in mind that Xenia is a newer emulator. Not every single game is going to work 100%. It is going to be hit or miss. So I don't want you thinking going into this that every single game in the 360 library is going to be working perfectly it will not. Before you get to far involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, it definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, i got a Patreon link down below as well. And if you do need specialized one-on-one -on -one support, there is a $10 Patreon tier called Emulation Night School where you can chat with me directly, but if you pay attention here, we should be fine. And I do want you guys to take a look at the game compatibility list, I will show that in just a moment. Before you decide to install this to play your favorite 360 game, make sure it works first. That way you don't go through all the trouble of getting everything set up, just to find out it is incompatible. Now we're actually going to be using Xenia Manager here to install Xenia Canary and manage the entire thing. It is a newer application that basically is a front end for Xenia because the application emulation in itself doesn't have a ton of settings until you get into some of the INI files. So this entire tutorial is going to be predicated based on Xenia Manager. I'm going to show you how to install it, how to get it set up, how to install the .NET files for Microsoft Windows in case you don't have them on your system. Load games up, go through all the settings and get you guys playing the games you want to play and don't skip around in this tutorial i get so many comments with people asking me questions where the answer is in the video and you guys just skipped ahead so watch from start to finish it's going to be a lot easier and while xenia manager isn't the most attractive application in the world it gets the job done it installs patches and deals with everything in the background so you can spend more time just playing games and trust me the games that work work extremely well here when you do first start a game though if you notice a little bit of hitching sometimes that's just caching the shaders in the background because this is obviously translating some of those shaders over into different APIs, DirectX 12 or Vulkan, so you will notice that that is par for the course. So as far as getting Xenia Manager, if you go to the right hand side of the page on GitHub, you're going to see version 1.15.2 as the recording of this video. And we go ahead and click on releases and you will see it right here. This is a pre-release, but go ahead and use it. It works totally fine and I've been playing around with it. No issues whatsoever. Don't go to the most stable release. That is a little bit older and I do not recommend you guys grab that one. So we'll go ahead and just basically click into the pre-release and you're going to see Xenia Manager Experimental.zip. That is the file that we need to open up and download and you'll see a little bit of a change log here in case you're wondering what's going on. And Xenia Manager will keep both Xenia Canary and itself updated once you install it once, you will be fine. So Xenia installs to whatever folder you make it in. So go ahead and pick a place on your computer, pop that zip file in here, and unzip it into the folder. Don't nest it into another folder. Just hit extract here, not extract a folder, and you will be fine. And then you'll see a couple extra files, and Xenia Manager Desktop app is going to be there. So we're going to go ahead and double click on that. I deleted it so you could guys see this, but you do need a specific version of .NET installed on your system. So if you get that notification, just go ahead and hit install it'll open up the window in a browser to Microsoft's website and then you will have the .NET 8.0 runtime. This is essential for getting everything running so if you get that warning message that it's not installed go through the entire installation process just download the exe go ahead and double click it on your system and click install. It'll take care of everything else for you. That black screen there is just me giving permission to my system to go ahead and do it. This is in real time it takes like 15-20 seconds so again I want you to realize that the .NET runtime is a essential for getting Xenia Manager and Xenia Canary up and running. Without that, you're not going to be doing much whatsoever, so do not skip over that at all. And odds are you probably don't have it installed on your system if I had to guess, so most of you will be going through this process. From there, go ahead and double click Xenia Manager again, and you're going to hit Install Xenia Canary. That is going to install the emulator for you. You can also just unzip the version on GitHub into the same folder. That is fine as well, but this is how I recommend to do it. When you first install it, it's going to pop open a window for Canary in and of itself, and it's going to say Create Profile or Open Profile Menu. Since this is probably your first time using Xenia, go ahead and give yourself a gamer tag. For this, it's Video Game Esoterica Tutorial, but if you do want to play online, this is what's going to appear. Once you do that and hit OK, go ahead and close Xenia Canary. 
Now I did talk about the compatibility list. Go through this. There's so many games that do have issues. It's not a knock on the emulator. This is still in development. So make sure you go through this to make sure the games you're trying to run will work. If we go over to something like Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, you're going to see it has broken collision if your CPU supports the AVX 512 instruction set. Mine does, some modern ones do, some modern ones don't. And honestly, to fix this, you have to go into your BIOS and disable the AVX 512 extension. I am not going to show you how to do that. If you're watching an emulation tutorial, you're probably not super comfortable going around the BIOS. So this is more advanced level stuff that you kind of want to Google around. The point I'm trying to make here is that not every single game runs perfectly. Some run with some graphical glitches, some don't run whatsoever. If we pop over to something like Ridge Racer 6, this is running in Xenia right now. You would think that the emulation on this game is absolutely perfect. But if we go to a different level with these trees, you're going to see they flicker on the sides of the road. There is no real solve for this right now. It is just one of those things. Don't expect perfect performance. Don't expect perfect graphics. And you won't be disappointed if you go into this thinking it's just going to be an upscale 360 playing every single game like real hardware. You're going to be a little bit let down. So again, can't stress enough. Go through that compatibility list search the game you want to play and make sure it's running before you spend all the time doing it those flickering trees really don't bother me but maybe it's a deal breaker to you so if you're trying to play ridge racer 6 it might not be your cup of tea with a little bit of graphical glitching going on but moving back over to xenia manager this is where we're now going to install the game so it's going to give you a library where xenia canary just has you open up files and it runs them from there so go ahead and grab whatever game it is you're trying to run you do need to own these and you should be dumping them yourself we'll go ahead and pick halo 3 here once you select the iso file we'll go ahead and hit open and then it'll auto populate into Xenia Manager or you can double click it as well. You're going to get a pop-up window that just shows the game here. Don't worry about Xbox Marketplace. Just click Halo 3 and that will install the game into Xenia Manager and then it'll be ready to launch. I do want to go over some of the settings though before we get too far involved. And as far as controllers are concerned, Xenia Canary and Xenia Manager will bind to any controller you have plugged in. I can't recommend enough an Xbox Series X controller because it is the Xbox layout. It is automatically detected and everything is set for you. Now as far as the Xenia Manager settings for Halo 3, these are our game to game settings and that's why I love Xenia Manager so much. I'm going to pop it up to 1920 by 1080 but depending on your system you may have better or worse performance. You do want to bring a decent CPU and a decent GPU along for the ride. And as far as the graphics API, I select any here. Some games in the compatibility notes will say that they work with one API better than the other one, so you can change that over. But otherwise, Xenia Manager basically sets all of the game settings for that particular title correctly. And you're going to see here game patches on. If there's any patches for the game, it'll pull them down from a GitHub repository and plug them in for you perfectly fine. You'll see here you can pick different controllers, but I select any. That means anything that works as a controller will be detected by Xenia Canary when you launch the game. From there you can save if you want to and just go ahead and double click on the game in your library and that library will always stay there as long as the files are still on your PC. So it is a nice thing to have Xenia Manager in the background so that you do have that library, that quick click, get into the game and play. And you'll see here I am playing Halo 3 on Xenia Manager and everything seems to be running relatively well and looks good as I just take a look at a rock here trying to jump into the wrong spot. It's been a few years since I've played this game. But that is basically the setup process for Xenia. I know you'd expect it to be more difficult because it is an emulator for a relatively modern system, but honestly, Xenia Canary does most of the stuff in the background, and if you follow this tutorial, you'll be totally fine. But again, I can't stress enough the following bits of information. Make sure that that .NET is installed or else none of this is going to work whatsoever. And definitely go through the game compatibility list and make sure the title you want to play works. And remember that when you first play the game, for maybe the first 15 or 20 minutes, there can be some hitching and that's when the shaders are being compiled in the background because it's basically translating a lot of what the Xbox 360 would do onto a modern GPU, whether it's Nvidia or AMD. So do keep that in mind. It's not bad performance. It's just the emulator compiling in the background, but I would say at least here in Halo 3 the game looks perfect It's 100% playable at 1920 by 1080 for me And I know you can play this game from start to finish But for every title like Halo 3 where I can make that statement There's titles that won't launch whatsoever There's titles that have terrible graphical corruption There's titles that just basically will freeze on you and that is the fun part and also the downside of playing around with emulation That is currently in development This isn't something like Duck Station where pretty much every single game ever will run or something like Dolphin. It is in development and every 
single update will fix some things and break other things. This is kind of the forefront of emulation here. Stuff like PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 emulation. You do have those situations where not everything is perfect, but that is kind of the fun. And if you follow along with this guide, you'll be playing Xbox 360 games on your PC. And if you do have that AVX 512 instruction set, do be aware that you probably want to Google how to turn that off in your BIOS for certain titles. But short of that, if you pay attention to everything in this video, you can play 360 on your computer, and that's the goal. If you have any questions, leave them down below, but we're done. Go play some Halo 3. Bye-bye.